I will go over the easy stuff and afterwards I'll show you some more advanced positions. This position for white is easily winning. The only thing we need to do here with white is just bring in the king. So how do we do that? Well, we can start with king to d3, king e8, king e4, king f8 and king to e5. And after king e8, we play the move king to d6. Our mission is accomplished because we were able to bring in the king. King goes to f8, we can just move the pawn up one square to e7 and the king has to block the pawn with king to e8. And now basically the solution to this puzzle is to lose a tempo because as you can see the king has only one square left to go to. So we want to play a waiting move with the bishop, we don't want to play uh, the move king to e6 this would be stalemate because the king controls these squares and the pawn controls these squares. What we want to play is we want to play some waiting move with the bishop. Say we play the move bishop to c1, the king goes to f7 and now we can play the move king to d7 and afterwards we'll just be able to promote. So let's say king to d7, black plays the move king to g7 and we can just promote. So let's say this pawn is a rook pawn. I'll just place this one here on h6 just like that. This is still a win because the queening square of the pawn is on the same color as the bishop. The queening square is a dark square and the bishop is a dark square bishop. In this position we just first bring in the king. So we play king to d3, king to g8, king to e4, king to f7 and king to f5. The king goes back and we go forward. After king to h8 the technique is pretty easy. The only thing we need to do is we need to control the queening square with the bishop. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We play the move bishop to f6, king to g8 and now we play the move h7. And now the black king can't go to h8 and block the pawn because we control that square with the bishop. So the king has to go to f8 and now we can just promote with checkmate because we control all of these squares with the bishop and the king and we control these squares with the queen. This is the endgame series, a series in which I explain all the endgames and increasing difficulty. Also, according to YouTube statistics, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe. Enjoy the video. Now let's have a look at this position. This is a little bit more advanced. Why is this more difficult? Because now the queening square is not on the same color as the bishop because now the queening square is a dark square and the bishop is on a light square. Let's say in this position we would make use of the same technique and we would bring in the king. That would be a draw. Let's see how. King to d3, king to g8, king to e4, king to h8, king to f5, king to g8 and king to f6. Black plays the move king to h8 and we have a problem because we have no good move in this position. Let's say we would play the move h7 in this position. You can see that this is stalemate because we control this square with the pawn, we control this square with the king and we control this square with the bishop. Nor can we play a move like king to f7, let's see why, because now we control these squares with the king and this one with the bishop. And again this is stalemate. So any attempt by white to promote his pawn will result in a stalemate position. Let's say we change the position a little bit and we place this bishop here now on f5. So we get this position. If this would be white to move, this would be easy. Now we can play the move bishop to e6. And as you can see, we control these squares with the bishop and this square with the pawn. Now the king is restricted on these squares and he has only two moves left. After king to e8, we can play the move h7 and promote the next move. The problem in this position though is that the bishop is not there and so we are not able to play a move like this because the king would just take the bishop. The only winning attempt here by white would be to control the square on g8 because from the square on g8 the king can go to h8. So we want to control that square and we play the move bishop to h7. And now we control all of these squares. The problem though is that black's plan now will be to go around and take the pawn. And as you can see, we are too late with white. Let's say king to f7, king to d3, king to f6, and now a move like king to e4 doesn't work because black goes to g5 and he'll just take the pawn. Instead of king to e4, you could try something like bishop to f5, but it's still a draw. Because after bishop to f5, the king won't go 
to the g5 square because then we can promote nor will the black king take the bishop because then we can promote as well but he will just go to f7 and now he's threatening to go to h8 so we need to stop that plan but then he just goes back and then we need to go back and then he goes back and this is just a repetition with the draw but if we just change the position a little bit and we place the king here on d2 let's have a look this now is a win for white and now this idea actually works because we are in time with the white king to control the square on g5. Let's have a look at the same line we've seen before. Bishop to h7, king to f7, king to e3, king to f6 and now king to f4. We are controlling the square on g5. But we're still controlling all these squares here on the g file. And with white we just go up with the king. We play the move king to f5. King to f8, king to f6 and black has only one move left. Because we control all of these squares. King to e8 is forced and now we just need to play some move with the bishop and just promote. So let's say king to b1. We always choose the most fancy move. And now after king to f8 we play the move h7 and we'll just be able to promote the next move let's have a look at this position and it looks like this should be a win for white the queening square is the same square as the bishop and so if we would ever be able to take this pawn on h7 this would be a win the problem is any attempt by white to take this pawn will result in a stalemate position king to f6 and with black you need to be very careful in this position there is only one good move and that's the move king to f8 you can't go to h8 if you go to h8 white would just play the move king to f7 he's controlling the squares on g8 and g7 and he's attacking the king with the bishop this would be an immediate mate so obviously we can't have that and we need to play the move king to f8. With white there is just no possible way to make progress. We'll just keep standing on these squares with black. Let's say bishop to d6, king to e7 and now we have to go to h8. But there is just no way for white to make progress. So let's say he goes for the move king to f7. This would be mate because white controls both of these squares. And obviously we can't take our own pawn with black. Let's say he goes for the move bishop to e5 check. We have to go to g8. And really for white there is just no way to make progress. Let's say he go to f6. This is just the starting position, we go to f8. Let's say instead he'd go to e8. This is gonna be stalemate because the king controls these squares and the bishop controls these squares. In this position, it's actually pretty funny. You can add as many pawns as you want. So let's say I'd add some pawns over here. Then we would get this position. But this is still a draw. Even though if I'd listened to Stockfish in this position, he'd say that this is plus five for white. Because Stockfish thinks, well, I'm up three points, right? I'm up a full bishop. But the problem is that this bishop is just so ineffective. This piece just doesn't do anything. So just to illustrate this, let's say white goes to f6. Remember not to go to h8 because that would result in an immediate checkmate, just like that. Of course, we just go to f8, and if we just keep standing on these squares, it's gonna be a draw. Let's have a look at the same line we've seen before. Bishop to d6 check, king to g8, king to e7, and now king to h8. Something like bishop to e5, king to g8, king there or there, we would just be able to go back, and that would be similar to the starting position. Or again, if the king would go to e8, let's say this move, this is again completely stalemate. Now what I'll do is I will move every single piece one square to the left and then we get this position. And so the first thing you think in this position is that okay the queening square is on the same color as the bishop. The queening square is a light square and we have a light square bishop. But any attempt by white to take this pawn will again result in a stalemate. First of all, after something like king to d7, this is already stalemate. The king controls these squares and the bishop these. And after king to e6, we can even choose where to go. It's both gonna be a draw. But I think the easiest is now just to go to the corner and we just play the move king to g8. King to e7 check and now we do actually go to the corner, king to h8. And as you can see, any attempt by white to take this pawn, either king to f7 or king to f8, let's say king to f7, will result in a completely drawn position. The white pawn controls this square and the white king controls this square. Okay, this is the final position of today. This position was already known in the 18th century and it's a very famous draw. 
Basically, it's a draw because this bishop isn't doing anything. And there is no possible way for the bishop to get back into the game because if he'd go to g8, we'd just be able to take the bishop. Let's see how that goes. White plays the move king to g5 and we go to the corner. And now for white, there is no possible way to get actually into the game because after either king to h6 or king to f6, it's going to be a draw. Let's say king to f6, you can see that the king controls this square, the pawn controls this square, and the bishop controls this square. And let's say white tried to get his bishop into the game and he plays the move bishop to g8, we will just be able to take that bishop with the king. If you don't know how to draw this position, feel free to watch my video on the drawn king and pawn endgame. To illustrate this is a draw, we can have a look at this line, king to h6. We just block the king with the move king to h8. We control both of these squares, there is no way for the white king to get in. And after something like g7 check, king to g8 and king to g6, this is a draw. The pawn controls all of these squares and the king controls all of these squares. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! This is pretty funny. Uh, this in this position is actually in this position it check.